Hi, good afternoon. I'm Peter Jacobs. I'm a career particular area manager, currently working, working as a consultant and currently doing a little bit of work for the University of Tasmania, um, hence being here today. <coughs> Excuse me, I wanted to talk about um, a science management community partnership that's currently underway and um, use the wild horses in the Australian Ops National Parks as a case study for that. So the situation at the moment we have uh, in the Australian Ops National Parks, which um, are a, a landscape scale of, of the parks in southeastern Australia, which take in uh, the, the alpine regions of Australia, is that we have um, about 1.6 million hectares of protected areas uh, managed under three different jurisdictions. So three different states, and because national parks in Australia are managed by the states, it's almost like three different countries in some ways in terms of managing cross borders, so that's important. Uh, there is an increasing wild horse population. Some people might have heard them being called Brumbies in Australia. Wild horses, feral horses, um, the same thing. Um, in our last count, so there's probably more than 10,000 horses throughout the landscape. They impact heavily um, on sensitive areas, as you can see by that photo, uh, particularly the wetlands and bog areas, which are very sensitive and very important for, for water and, and for clean water and good catchments. Um, and currently, management strategies are being developed to, to deal with that population of horses. The challenges is that in terms of science-based knowledge of impacts and control, it's fairly minimal. So we don't have a strong base to work from in terms of current science. Importantly, the public attitudes of horse, horse welfare and cultural values really diverge. There's a massive difference in opinion in the community about how we should be managing horses. Um, the community appreciation of the issue is actually quite low. People have this romantic vision of horses, but they don't really know much about what they do or how many there are. Um, and there are several well-established interest and lobby groups that lobby very heavily, uh, in particular for the protection of horses. So it's a bit of an interesting mix, um, and of course any, any strategy that's going to come out of that is actually crucial that it's got good science, but even more crucial that it's got good community support. So I guess the, this is not news to people, but you know, collaborative partnerships are so important in, in dealing with issues that have such diverse issues. Um, so the wild horse management strategies across all those different jurisdictions need to have good science and evidence-based decision support. When going to the community, of course, it's crucial to be able to have good data and good information to work with. Um, the, the level of uh, credibility and the level of trust is very high uh, if that's presented. Um, and of course, a strong community engagement, particularly in this, in this particular um, issue, um, is absolutely crucial and, and listening to, to all the different views. Um, and of course, the roles of managing managers, practitioners, and policy makers. So we, we need a, a good mix of these three to how we solve this problem. So in terms of the partnerships, I suppose, firstly the science partnership, um, the National Environment Research Program uh, has a landscape and policy hub uh, sector within that, which is currently working with managers on, on this horse program. So this has been a fantastic um, opportunity to use uh, good scientists and researchers to help managers come up with solutions. And some examples, um, uh, developing uh, MCAS, which is a decision support tool, uh, developing the data packed and information to inform MCAS to be able to work with managers on, on looking at different scenarios and different options in terms of uh, what the impact on, uh, on horses is mostly and how we might weight different values and, and make some decisions. So that's been a really useful um, science supported um, input into the project. Um, and in particular, some new tools in Spade um, is a new tool that um, has been, it's been developed particularly in this project uh, to look at horses. So again, working with the community and with managers has been able to load in different scenarios um, in terms of what control programs might look like and then show the outcome, at least in a modern sense, about what that might be, particularly in terms of funding and looking at how different programs are going to cost and what the outcome might be, and of course remote sensing. But the key message there, I think, with, with science from a manager's perspective, is to collaborate early on what's needed, so we've got a really good partnership going. The second uh, is the community partnership, and uh, because of the diverse range of views here, uh, we set up a stakeholder round table, uh, which is largely an independent round table, independent chair, wasn't, wasn't um, managed by the managers as such, um, and it involved all the, all the main interest groups from, from all sides of the, of the, uh, the debate, um, and that's been really important in terms of bringing together, getting some collaboration going and some thinking amongst that round table, and in, in fact them debating amongst themselves rather than debating with managers all the time. So that's been um, a, a good way of dealing with the community. The other um, really interesting one I think was a public perception survey. So we, heard, we know a lot about what people, we, we hear through the media what people think about horses, but what do they really think? 
So we ran a telephone survey of about 800 people um, in the region to, to test their knowledge of, of uh, wild horses and uh, to test their views of different control techniques. And as you'd expect, you know, aerial shooting horses is, uh, with many people, with, for many people, uh, something they just can't deal with. So trying to really understand what, what the community is thinking about different control methods. Um, and of course, the, the normal um, uh, consultation. But I guess the important thing there is understanding what the community actually does think. Um, we also tested how much we can shift those views with a bit of education and informing, and of course, getting the round table involved. Um, and the, the third part of the partnership, of course, is the managers and practitioners. How do they fit in? And the important thing, I think, for protected area managers and practitioners is informing. Uh, the stakeholder group really, uh, uh, I, guess, I suppose, needs that process of informing what the issue is and what the options are. And, of course, listening. Very much about sitting back, letting the stakeholder group talk, discuss, informing, but listening to the outcomes rather than trying to dominate the outcomes. Uh, to the practitioners in terms of technical reference is very important, so we set up a specialist advice group in terms of advising uh, on the more technical aspects. Um, and of course the policy and planning managers, um, they need to plan and facilitate the partnership so that it feeds in uh, to a good outcome. And in, importantly, it doesn't just finish when the plan's done, uh, that, that round table and that whole community involvement needs to continue right through implementation uh, as we need to adapt to changing circumstances. So why partner uh, for control programs? I think with wild horses in particular, it's an extremely sensitive issue. Um, so it's absolutely uh, critical that um, we have good science and good social-based evidence. Uh, we have an informed and largely, hopefully, a largely supportive community. And I guess the evidence is that you more the, the more you inform the community, the more likely they're going to become supportive. Um, and of course, the modelled control strategies, which can be presented to the community so that there's a level of trust about what we're trying to achieve in the long term. So this is still very much work in progress. A lot of the science community partnership work is established. Um, plans are, are now in various stages going out amongst the different jurisdictions, um, of course aiming to um, at least have a serious control uh, of feral horses in the, in the Australian Alps. Okay, thank you.